Hello and welcome to the sixth episode of the Press Play podcast. I'm joined today by singer, songwriter, all-round great guy, Connor Leckenby. How are you doing, man? Hi, I'm good. Yeah, not bad. Thanks. Yourself? Perfect. Oh, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, it's, it seems like ages since I've done a podcast because the last one I recorded like last week. So and I missed a week. And yeah, so I'm going to try and get back into the swing of things. But thank you for coming on. Um, some, got some exciting stuff to talk about so that's always good first things first for those people for people who don't know who you are could you give us a quick summary who are you what do you do why are you here all of that jazz yeah so uh, my name's connor leckenby i'm a singer songwriter from leeds um yeah and i release music and hopefully people listen to it <laughs> <laughs> so you've got as uh, when this comes out your newest song will have been released uh, yes if i'm right yes and i'm gonna quickly just double check the name of it it is called i'll get there i'll get there yeah i could i could help paradise, them. paradise. <laughs> that's it <laughs> you got paradise coming out so um we'll talk a bit about that later on um but yeah. my first question i ask all of my guest my guest guests is why music what what was it about music that made you think yeah let's let's give that a go um I mean, as bad as it probably sounds, it's, it's quite nice finishing work and people clapping you, really. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, the sort of most obvious term, it's quite nice to sort of, yeah, get applauded, really, yeah. uh, more than anything. So what is your, what's your background in music? Were you, were you always in it? Is it something that you've sort of come into later on in your life? Is it, you know? Um, sort of bits and bobs, really. So I've kind of always been around it like I played guitar sang in bands when I was quite young sort of 13 14 then I didn't really do anything with it for a few years then I went to sort of and trained in musical theatre so I did that for four years um then I was on cruises I've sort of done all that side of it and then in the lockdown I started writing my own songs again and it's kind of come from there really I suppose so the song, the songwriting has been sort of a, a newer sort of endeavour for you then? Yeah, in like, as I say, when I was quite young, I used to write a lot of songs um, and then I just didn't do it for sort of 10, 15 years and, well, not that long. I don't, I'm not, I'm not as old as I'm making out. <laughs> I've been doing it for quite a while and then I've sort of fell back into it, yeah, pretty much. So it's, it's interesting that you come from a, a musical theatre background. Listening to what I've heard of your music anyway, it, it's... Definitely got some inspiration there, but I would never have guessed that you were sort of musical theatre trained. What what was that about? Was that just something, have you always enjoyed musical theatre or is it just something you thought, yeah, let's give it a go? I'm not even really sure where, how it came about. Um, I think I wanted to do singing as a job. And for me, that was the best route into that, I suppose. Um, I'd always sort of done acting and things like that. Um, so it was kind of, through that side of it, really, I think the thought of like, a lot of, sort of the just music courses, you had to have a lot of music theory. And I was always kind of like, I could do things, but not necessarily understand why this chord is how this chord is. And I think that actually really sort of switched me off for it quite a while. Um, so it was a kind of a, a, a different way into it for me, I suppose, really. Okay. Did you did you ever go on to perform on any any shows? Like even if it was Am Amdram stuff, did you have you performed any shows? Yeah, I've done sort of quite a few sort of even in when I was at drama school, we put on quite a few productions and stuff like in theatres and things. So that was always quite good. Um, and when I came back from the cruise ship, I sort of did the West End audition circuit for kind of twelve months. Mm -hmm. um, did okay, sort of final three a few times, things like that. But it just kind of it just left me feeling a little bit like I needed something different and I kind of wanted to be actually performing for my job and instead of working in a pub to pay my bills so I can go to auditions. It kind of mm -hmm. killed my soul a little bit. Um, it's an odd, odd sort of way of life. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, I'm glad I did it, but I wouldn't necessarily be in a rush to go back mm -hmm. down that avenue anytime soon, really. And what was you mentioned cruise ships? What's the what's working on a cruise ship like? I've never worked one. I know a few people who have. That some people say, oh, it's awful. I've heard some people say it's amazing. What what was your 
Um, I think a bit of both, really. There's truth in probably both sides of it. I think sort of the, the pros, obviously, you can wake up every day, you're in a different country. It's a very good way to see a lot of things, but you don't necessarily have that much time all the time. There's a lot of, there is a lot of work. It's kind of, it's viewed as this, oh, it's a really glamorous holiday. It's, it was pretty full on work-wise, mm-hmm. um, which was, again, good and bad, I suppose. Um, got to do what I, I love doing. Um, but there was just, it, it was an awful lot. <laughs> um, I was on it for 12 months, um, which was kind of a good amount of time. It let me think, like, if it had been shorter, I might have done another one. Um, but with it being 12 months, it kind of, I quite like being on land. Um, <laughs> I, like, I like the freedom of it, really, I think. Was it Was it a, because um, I know from some people that I know, they when they work on a cruise ship they're expected to do other roles were you purely music or were you uh, like sort of a steward yeah we had other things it was a lot yeah and i i was in charge of a lifeboat if anything went wrong <laughs> uh, not necessarily who i'd want looking after me if <laughs> down um yeah it still blows my mind when i think like the fact like, obviously they don't think anything's going to happen but mm-hmm. you hear of it and the fact it would have been myself and the other show team members just dealing with it all is kind of wild really yeah that's you got you get a job expecting to play drums and next thing you know you've got to do cpr on someone in a sinking boat um it must be <laughs> terrifying <laughs> so who who were your biggest inspirations when you were growing up who were you listening to or what were you forced to listen to by your parents in some cases what what's I'm kind of lucky. My dad's got pretty good music taste. He never really forced me into any of it, but I do take quite a lot from him, I suppose. Um, me and my dad used to go to quite a lot of gigs when I was pretty young. Um, I think the first ever gig we, we quite like to laugh is he took me to see Sum 41 when I was eight, I think, <laughs> which is a bit bit wild. <laughs> I mean, not bad, though. I mean, there's, there's yeah. worse first bands to see. Yeah, yeah, but when you're eight, um, <laughs> it sets its own. <laughs> so we've just had to keep going. So, yeah, sort of varying kind of inspirations, I suppose you'd call them. Kind of the whole, I was very into sort of pop punk as a kid, like Fall Out Boy, uh, Sum 41, and then kind of a bit later on, Arctic Monkeys, sort of indie bands. Mm-hmm. Um, like when I was a young young kid like i loved queen when i was a like a toddler for like, bohemian rhapsody was like my favorite song as a child so mm-hmm. it's kind of it's already got a little bit of theatrics in there hasn't it really <laughs> <laughs> um so i've i've been doing some stalking I've, I've looked you up on the internet and found out a few things nothing nothing defamatory don't worry uh but uh, you're currently signed to is it aec is that the name of the management company yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so how did that come about how were you did you approach them did they approach you um it was kind of pretty organic so we've known of each other through social media we know quite a lot of the same people and aging uh the, the guy who sort of owns and runs the company he's always been very supportive and helpful and it just came about really where I was like, oh, could this be a thing really? <laughs> and yeah, it's been it's been good. Yeah, good. That's, you've released, yeah. is it three songs you've released or will be three songs? Sorry. So this is, I've done, this is kind of the third, kind of the fourth, if that makes any sense. Yeah, because you've got, uh, was it Don't Be Scared had an acoustic? It did, yeah. I had a little acoustic moment with that one. So this is the fourth song you can technically listen to. Mm-hmm. They're different, one, but it's my second one with uh, the guys at AEC. Oh. Um, not our story was the first one I'd done there. I'd kind of been a little bit of a one man band before then, so it was nice just to have somebody to bounce ideas off. And he, like I say, he's he's been a great help and just really sort of focused what it is that I need really, which is perfect. How would you say your your music has changed from? your first single, Not Our Story, to the newest one that's coming out. Has, has there been a big change in what they sound like? or It's quite it's quite a change, yeah. It's um, a lot sort of heavier, faster. Mm-hmm. I think with the first one, I didn't do any of the music because like that's always something that has kind of been like, oh, that's... Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of took a step away from that, so it ended up being a bit more of a piano ballad kind of feel. Then the next one, I wrote the guitar part. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. but adding the player. So I left it to somebody else and sort of they added their own sort of bits in. Obviously, they didn't go completely left field, but there was an element of it wasn't fully me playing it, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, next one, I'm playing guitar, I'm playing bass. I sat and helped program the drums. So it is fully the sort of in, insides of my mind, I suppose, is the only way I can describe it, if that makes any sense, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, it's impossible because I'm very, uh, it's always going, there's a lot going on at all times. So, like, what is in there doesn't necessarily come out of my mouth. So, mm-hmm. for somebody else to try and sieve that out must be like the hardest thing in the world. So, I think it was just a case of um, just playing it and just, yeah. And it was, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I think it's completely different. Um, much more of what, I want to be doing, I think, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, from the little from the little teasers and that you that you uh, put out, it definitely is different from what I can hear of it so far. Um, I, yeah. I believe the one that you put out recently, it's got to me anyway. It's got a, quite a biffy clarowy sort of uh, guitar sound to it. I don't know if you thought you were going for, but I'll take it. I'll take it. It's not a bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry. What is your, how has your process been? How has it changed from, like you say, we've not asked story, you said that you sort of more performed it, wrote it, it was your ideas, but this one is more you. What, what was the process for that? How did you, how did it all start? Um, so it started with literally a guitar riff, really. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of, I'm terrible for playing around and then I put something on my voice notes and I forget about it and I had a day where I kind of sat down and I was like it came pretty fast I was like oh I've got this this thing playing around with it next thing I know okay what could we do for the verse did that got the whole sort of music down done we're good then the lyrics came super fast and I was like oh we've got a song it literally was like an hour maybe tops And, and I'd been sitting on it though for like I wrote the guitar, the main part of it, probably like six months previous, and I just hadn't come up with anything or not. It's just weird how like you can have them days where suddenly it just it clicked. It just clicked, and I'm yeah. Having a good a good day, sort of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you have you got lots of things sort of half done, lots of licks recorded that you want to turn in stuff, just haven't found anything for them yet? Or have you got a yeah, big back catalogue? I'm pretty bad for that. Like I've got the next singles already done recorded. Um, okay. in a couple of months' time, mm-hmm. um, let let paradise have its its moment for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's I'm hoping to get another one out. So maybe another two releases this year, maybe mm-hmm. if time will allow, and then one early next year um, is the plan. Because I have the sort of amount of stuff, like you say, I kind of got enough stuff where if I sort of sit myself down in a room and say you're not leaving until it's done it'll get done but I'm, I'm very big for getting distracted and I'm a terrible procrastinator <laughs> so if I have something to do I'll find 50 other things until it's kind of like a book studio time and it's a day before and I'm like I need a song mm-hmm. well, I don't have any songs and I'm like oh no <laughs> what have I done that um yeah so I'm not going to get into that situation again I'm going to make sure we're done and we're correct <laughs> So are you currently gigging with some of these songs? Like you say, the next one's done. Have you have you, have you sort of previewed it but not told anyone that it's coming? Or um, I haven't yet, no. So sort of like going into next year, one of the main things on the list is to start get some gigs in mm-hmm. myself. Um, I do a lot of cover gigs and things at the minute, um, which is great. It's sort of given me the freedom to do what I'm doing, really. You've got to have money for things like studio time and promotion and all that stuff so I have that at the minute which is great just from doing all the other work I'm doing but it's just I would love to be able to sort of say four or five times next year it's just me and a band and I get to play these songs because especially the next sort of two mm-hmm. very much lend themselves so then they, they need to be done live I think um there's definitely an element of that sort of raw energy which I think is is great um, and I'd love to just be able to put that across. Yep. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. Because it says uh, it says on your website that you've performed in places like Dubai, Russia, Norway. How did how did they come about? Were they with the sort of cover work that you were doing or 
Yeah, so that was that was pretty much that was all sort of cruise based stuff. Um, oh, okay. So again, it marries it marries up when you think it's like there's a lot more. It was like fifty something countries I ended up singing in in a year. Mm-hmm. Um, that was just like a my personal highlights. Um, some some great places. Brilliant, fantastic. Uh, so we do run a little segment on the show. I don't know if you've listened to any of the other episodes. Um, if you haven't, go back and listen to them. They're great. Uh, but we give you some quick fire questions. So I'm going to just give you some this or that. You give me your gut instinct what do you think um, okay. is they're slightly changed i've had some feedback on them so i've changed them slightly so they'll be slightly different but starting with number one uh are you a stratocaster or a telecaster man i'll go telecaster telecaster okay uh it was originally glastonbury or coachella but you're from leeds so i'm going to change it glastonbury oh. or reading and leeds festival well as i've got my reading and leeds festival banned on from the weekend <laughs> um i'll probably say reading and leeds festival oh. Yeah, that's the first person to not go Glastonbury. So well, uh, yeah, yeah. I've been to Reading and Leeds that many times though, where I feel like it might maybe a change. I don't know. Do you do you do the camping there? Because obviously, if you're, if you're based in Leeds, you can always you can have a nice bed instead of a. I have done this year. I actually could, didn't have the full weekend off work, so I only did the Sunday. Okay. Um, which actually, when the last time I went was about ten years ago, it was. It was plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday was uh, was it Bring Me the Horizon and Up oh, the Monkeys? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Did you catch any? Who else did you catch there that you were? Uh... Um, I was sort of just catching a lot of newer stuff that I'd never heard of, really, oh, okay. which was quite nice. Um, there was a band called the Skinner Brothers that I'm now telling everybody about that. I like my new favorite thing. Uh, it was wild. It was great. Fantastic. Yeah, throw in men in the it was ridiculous there was more people in the crowd from off the state it was wild are, are you um, are you a pit enjoyer do you get involved in the pits or um i mean I've, I've, yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's i kind of look back and think like so when we used to go to Lee special when like i was a kid like so we'd go when we were like 13 and we'd be in like pits for like gallows and stuff and now i'm kind of like, kind of over it like we're mosh pit into like aj tracy i'm like we yeah. need to be in it um, give your back yeah. a bit of a rest give your back a bit of a rest <laughs> i feel like i'm an old man now <laughs> i'm like oh god uh, are you a spotify or an apple music user i'm Spo- i'm spotify spotify okay uh the beatles or the rolling stones mm. i'm gonna be a little i'm really not that I... Terrible, isn't it? Like I'm, I'm not. Yeah, um, I'll go the Rolling Stones just to be different. Okay, different. fair enough. That's not really. I, yeah, I'm not great on either of them, really. To be oh honest. wow, okay. okay. Yeah, that's what I, mean. I felt a bit contentious saying it because <laughs> they're but... they're the like pinnacle of British music. They're like the Godfathers. So it's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think it's my dad and my mum were sort of. They were quite big into the Sex Pistols and stuff like that. So I was never really, I've never really grown up with any of like the Stones or the Beatles. Okay. Uh, if I had to pick out the two, probably go the Stones. But uh, yeah, don't, fair, don't, fair hate, don't, don't hate me. It's not, it's not the <laughs> same Stones. Uh, so this can you can interpret the tell if you want. It's either whether you go to watch a show or where you where you'd play it, where you'd like to play a show. Do you prefer theatres or stadium gigs? Ooh. I quite like theatres. Like, I like quite small sort of gigs, I suppose. I okay. think that's sort of intimate feeling of like a small, like definitely like an O2 Academy over an O2 Arena for mm-hmm. sure. Um, every time. I think there's some great little venues around the country. It's something that I'm trying to get back into and going out and seeing bands because I think, especially after COVID, I kind of realised that's something I hadn't been doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've managed to catch a few little bits and I've got a few more to come, so that's good. Fantastic. Um, rock music or jazz music? Rock music. Rock, okay. Uh, and then this is the most important one. Everyone has had the same answer so far, but uh, are you a Harry, a Zane, Louis, Nile, or a Liam fan? Well, I mean, that's quite easy, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's got to be Mr. Styles, doesn't it, really? Uh, fair enough. I mean... 
Is that the general answer you're getting? Yeah, everyone is saying Harry. Everyone is saying Harry. I'm going to have to change it to the Spice Girls, I think, at some point. Yeah, that would be more difficult. <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, let's talk about your new single. We talk, spoke about it a little bit. Um, where can people find it when it comes out? What's uh, I say when it comes out? When this comes out, it's gonna be out. So let's just maybe. Yeah. 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 Um. So I mean, everywhere. Hopefully, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, um, Amazon. Does anybody? I don't know. People use that. I've never used it, so I'm going to say no, no. About it. <laughs> no one ever it. uses it. I have it for free and I don't even use it. Um, <laughs> if it's on there, you can find it, I'm sure. What What are your hopes for this for this new single? What are you hoping to sort of achieve with it? Obviously, number one hit is the ultimate goal, but... Um... I think just bringing sort of a new fan base in and a new awareness to the sort of new stuff that I'm going to be doing mm-hmm. um, and hopefully reaching some different places because, like I say, the plan is to get out and do a few sort of bits next year, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, like just bring some new people in, increase the fan base, all, all the good stuff really. Have you, so in terms of your fan base, you currently have about over 3000 followers on Instagram. Is this from sort of your work doing the, doing the cover stuff? Is it from your, your solo work that you found your biggest sort of peak in this? Where, where have you sort of accumulated mm-hmm. these followers? just sort of been over a period of time like I started the Instagram page like as a musician like kind of what's it, five five six years ago now I think it's just a consistent thing like I try and keep consistent with my posting and stuff but it's it's it is difficult sometimes mm-hmm. I think when you're, you're busy to try and be that that everything um so obviously like these top artists they have teams of 40 30 people at a time and it's like it's a lot to think of the content, film the content, post mm-hmm. the content, right? then write your cat. It's like oh, you've got to be everything. The, yeah. It's 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 actually more time spent promoting than actually writing and recording the song, which is the wild yeah. part of it. it. Is part of the parcel nowadays, I think. So it's kind of yeah, it, it's all it's all part of what it is to be a, a an artist, a musician, anything nowadays. Really, I imagine it's probably very similar for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I've never been. This is the first sort of like sort of content that I've ever sort of made. Um, I've posted stupid videos on old YouTube channels that no one's ever going to find. But you know, this is I'm definitely. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, just the Instagram posting, constantly trying to push it out. It's it's very difficult, and I think it's quite off-putting for for sort of newer artists. It can be quite daunting, um, in some cases. Just if it's not something that you're used to doing, it's just mind blowing. Yeah. Exactly, it's kind of there's so many different things into it. People think, oh, it's just a post on Instagram, but it's it's actually not. It's like each time as a business you're doing it, it's kind of like a TV advert, I mm-hmm. suppose. And a lot more thought goes into them, probably. People think, you know, it's kind of it, it's a mad, mad sort of thing. I mean, it's great because you can do one thing on there and it can get massive, and then you can have all the fans in the world, or you could spend 12 years put in one post a day and to yourself it's Mm -hmm. it is just a kind of right time right place look thing um yeah with with anything really i suppose but yeah do do you just stick to sort of facebook twitter or all that or do you post on tiktok or or youtube or anything like that um yeah like i'm probably the most on instagram really Mm -hmm. and as a tool it's one that i kind of understand and Feel like you get comfortable with things, don't you? Really, uh, Facebook actually, as of yesterday, I realized my business Facebook page is kind of in limbo at the minute with nobody <laughs> in charge of it and they won't reply to my emails. So, I have problems with Facebook. Um, <laughs> um but yeah, it's, I find Instagram, I get the most sort of back from it. Um, y- yeah, but I think that's all it changes. Like, reels are massive at the minute, obviously. So, I think. Everyone's doing them, but by next month it'll probably be something else. So it's always constantly evolving, I suppose, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, so we've got another segment on the podcast that we like to do where we build a band. So you are going to pick live or dead, uh, whoever you like. Uh, you're going to pick a singer, a bassist, two guitarists, rhythm and lead, as well as uh, a drummer. So 
let's start with the least important instrument first. Who would you have in your dream band as your drummer? Ooh. Um, okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Dave Grohl. Okay, that's an interesting one. I'm going to go Dave Grohl. I've seen him play drums live. Oh, that's lucky. <laughs> it, was, it, was, um, it was a secret set years ago at Leeds Festival. Wow. Um, and it just came on the screen, and it was was when he was in them crooked vultures with um, Josh Holm mm-hmm. and the guy from Red Zeppo, and I forget which one his name. <laughs> the bassist, the bassist. Yeah, we'll call him the bassist. <laughs> he, do- wrong he, doesn't ma- he doesn't matter. The bassist never matters anyway. So it does. That's <laughs> I can't say that. I can. I, I am one. I know I don't matter. That's, that's the great thing about it. Um, no, that's, that's, that is a very interesting choice, especially considering he always said that like Taylor Hawkins was a better drummer than he was in, in the, like, the Foo Fighters. Yeah, I think he probably is. Um, but I think there's just something about whenever Dave Grohl plays drums, you instantly know it's Dave Grohl. There's kind of like almost like an extra bit of it's like aggression of a skill I'd say yeah the way he hits the drum is kind of like you instantly know it's him like even on the old Tenacious D songs back mm-hmm. in the day where it's like kind of a joke song but I can tell that that's Dave Grohl the, the, the funny thing is is um I'm a massive Dave Grohl fan he's like my 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 god in, in music so uh the reason he's got so he learned to play drums on pillows so he was be, beating drum. the crap out of pillows and it's like oh yeah. okay the amount of drum heads that man must have gone through is is insane. Uh, yeah, he's he's a beast. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Uh, who would you have playing bass for you? And uh, I'm guessing it's not going to be the Led Zeppelin bassist because you can't remember his name. I feel like uh, I need to Google it because it's going to annoy me. So when, I'm going to have to go and Google it. <laughs> is, it uh, P- is it Pino Palladino? No. No? No. No, no he was for The Who. He was the bassist for The Who. Yes. Um, oh, that's going to annoy me. Sorry, I'm Googling it now. John Paul Jones. See, I wanted to say that. <laughs> I said it and it's wrong. I'm going to look stupid. I should have just said it. I knew that. Um, <laughs> so, basis, I'm going to go... Who am I going to go? I'm going to go Flea, probably. Okay. That's a that's a, a good one. Probably a pretty obvious choice, then, eh? Uh, yeah. No, no uh, to be fair, I've not had Flea yet. It's it's been quite interesting the different um the different members that people have picked. I've not had anyone pick like Harry Styles as their lead singer yet though, which is quite odd considering the fact that everyone loves him. Um, but <laughs> yeah, everybody else, no, I don't know. <laughs> Who would you have on your lead guitar? Oh, that's a tough one. That is tricky. Um, I'm trying to think now. Put me on the spot, big time. Um, I can't think of anything that's not dead obvious, and I'm trying not. I'm trying not to go for the most obvious thing I in mean, the world. I mean, it's whoever you want. It's your dream band, so. I know, I know, but I'll say something, and I'll look back, and I'll go, "Oh, well, that was <laughs> stupid." Uh, like it'll come to me. I like be in the shower or something. I go. I have got better lead guitarist now. Well, if you can message me it before Monday, I can sort of overdub it in the, in the episode for you. I'll put like a Siri voice over it. <laughs> Does Siri have Northern on there? <laughs> I'm sure I can find it. Yeah. Um. Okay. Lead guitarist. Let's go with. I'm literally racking my head with so many different bands. Oh, it's painful, isn't it? This. Right, I've got a better option because I'm just, I've got nothing here. I'm just going to go onto Spotify. What have I been listening to? That's, a good, on. that's a good shout. Because it's, it's not going well, is it? <laughs> I'm going to ask you rhythm guitarist after this, so I'll give you a bit of a heads up on that one. Okay, <laughs> that, that I can probably, I can deal with. Um... It's just not great. Um, okay. I feel like rhythm guitarist might even be easier. Sure, let's go rhythm guitarist then. That's that's fine. We, we can have a four piece instead of a five piece. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we'll go rhythm guitarist. 
we are going to go for. I think I'm going to go. Why is this so difficult? This is this is really hard. I'm going to go with the guitarist from. I don't even know the names. Um, it's not great, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to go because of Sunday. I'll go Alex Turner on rhythm guitar. Wow. Okay. Which is weird. Yeah. But, uh, I'm going for it. Yeah. Um, and then on the other guitar. I'm gonna go with, you know what, will be really left field. I'm gonna go with Matt Bellamy from Hughes on lead guitar. Oh, that's probably the worst person we've had so far in all of the episodes. <laughs> I can't stand Muse, I'm afraid. It's, it's literally, <laughs> it's, um, it's, uh, it's on this playlist um, and it's the second song on the playlist. Oh, so that's wow. what Okay, that's that's fine. I think this is probably the first band I'm not going to go and see if they were a real thing. Oh, so. there'd be some mad stuff going on though. If he's <laughs> maybe I'll go on a day that Matt, Belli Matt Bellamy's ill, and maybe you're no, playing in his place. You didn't have to hear him sing. <laughs> well, that, might, okay. Not like it more. Fair enough. Yeah, he's no, only that's... threading in the corner on like some sort of keyboard oh, guitar. I was going to say on his iPad because that's what he uses. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> <laughs> it'd just be like, what's going on? <laughs> And then singer, who would you have fronting your band? Okay. Um, I'm going to go with... Oh, yeah, this is a random one, but I like it. I'm going to go with Patrick Stump from Fall Out Boy. Wow, that's a really good one. That's, that's a, a wild band. It makes no sense. Fall Out Boy <laughs> were, my, were my first band that I went to go see. They're my first concert. Um, oh, I love that. Save Rock and Roll tour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. I've seen them, seen them a few times. Got to love them. That's... a. Uh, that's a pretty other than Matt Bellamy. That's a pretty solid band. That's definitely in my wheelhouse of sort of music. So okay, what if we change Matt Bellamy? Will that make it happen? <laughs> uh, I don't know because he's just sort of the stink of him is going to be around the area at that point. Okay, so, we'll leave him. We'll leave him. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to back you. But... <laughs> so uh, we've only got a few minutes left on the meeting, so I'm going to try and sort of start to wrap this up. But I did want to ask, what was it like? Um, what's the music scene like up in Leeds? It may be back then or now, like. I'm from the south. It's pretty dead where I am. Virtually non-existent unless you go to London. But I always see from people on YouTube and, and just hearing things. The north is still pretty up there with music. So what's it like in Leeds specifically? Yeah, it seems to be good. There's quite a lot of venues and things. Obviously, the festivals kind of a big thing each year. Mm -hmm. um, but there's quite a lot of smaller venues in Leeds, I think, which is great. Um, there's a lot of bands seem to be coming here we've got the arena now which is like if you're into that sort of thing um you can go and see westlife there or oh great yeah you know what I mean? <laughs> um so yeah it's kind of quite broad i suppose because of that sort of aspect where you do have the, the arena then you've got the smaller rock venues you've got the o2 academy so it's it's great and even in manchester's not very far away mm -hmm. um so there's a lot, lot of there's a lot of good stuff up here. Sheffield as well, obviously. Um, yeah, the yes. North, North's got it going on. Yeah, it's quite interesting because a lot of the acts that are coming out that are in the sort of rock vein uh, and and that sort of thing all tend to be from from up there. I don't think I know any bands that are from down near me at all. I think yeah, I don't I don't know why, but I think it is that sort of indie sound though. You've got mm -hmm. like a way to some bands like that and it does lend itself a little bit more to up here, I suppose. It is kind of that industrial feel, which mm -hmm. in parts you can still see quite clearly. Um, so, yeah, I think that's probably it, but I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, it's a yeah. strange one. I, d I think it's partly to do with the whole, to become a musician, you really have to put your chops in and, and play. It's very hard to sort of post a song on YouTube and become a, a one, you know, a number one hit, whereas... <laughs> a lot of the bands that are good and people really do enjoy have put in years of work, work in the clubs and all that. And there's just nothing down south anymore. It's all closed and it's all vape shops and front fronts for the conservative government. But um, I'm not getting into politics. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I would assume maybe that's, that's why you can really put some work in, working up in the, up in the north sort of area of yeah, England. Yeah, possibly so. 
so uh we're gonna have to wrap up unfortunately we've got about four minutes left on the call so where can people find you uh where 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 can people find your music what do you want to shout out you've got this is all you i'm not going to speak anymore it's all you okay um so you can find me on instagram um well no social media really apart from facebook as i said um at connor let can be official hopefully the facebook will get sorted out if it doesn't i'm just not going to redo it because it's just takes up too much time in my life for them to do that um but yeah so connor let can be official my website is just connorleckenby.co.uk spotify or everywhere hopefully the song will be out yeah so just i hope you enjoy it stream it give it a follow everything all, all of it all of it fantastic well thank you very much for coming along i will leave all of connor's links uh in the description of the youtube video and of the spotify so do go check it out check out paradise it would have come out two three days ago because this is coming out on monday so it would have come out three days ago Go and give it a listen from all the teasers that I've seen. I've got it pre-saved already as of as of the recording of this. So definitely go and give it a, a listen and make sure you're following Connor to find out anything else that he's doing. Thank you very much for watching, Connor. Thank you for your time. See you all later. Cheers. Thank you.